We're going to pick up in chapter 10, and you know, it's, it's amazing how much of the New Testament relates to the Old Testament. In chapter 10, uh, Jesus is relating himself as the good shepherd, and of course, one of the most uh, beloved psalms in all of the, the Bible is Psalm 23, where it talks about the Lord is my shepherd, and we see that Jesus, in all of the things that he's talking about throughout uh, the book of John, there's this I am theme, I am yeah, uh, the way, the truth, and the life we're, see, we're going to see, and I am the shepherd, I am the door, and so, a couple of times it's just I am. And so we'll see this theme throughout, and in, in chapter 10 it, it continues. And so we see here, uh, verse 7, it says, true, there, Jesus therefore said to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. And he's talking about here, he's the door of the sheep, but he's also the good shepherd. And he's talking about he is the true shepherd, and in verse 10, he says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and might have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And so here, that's probably the key verse in all of uh, chapter 10 there is that he is the, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. I almost said kill first. I had someone in church that always corrected me if I said kill first. Anyway, steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, but he came that we might have life and have it abundantly or full. And so that's uh, the, the theme once again here. In, uh, I'm going to skip through to verse 31. Uh, after Jesus tells a lot here about, and it's, a lot of it's relating to his, once again, to his deity, to his, his being God in the flesh. And, and uh, it, this is really starting to cause a, a stir among the Pharisees. So we get to the point of uh, verse 31 here. And it says... Um, the Jews took up stones again to stone him. They knew what he was, uh, what he was getting at here. They understood the message very clearly, and they, they considered it blasphemy. And so, in fact, they say that in thir verse 32, Jesus answered them, I showed you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you stoning me? And the Jews answered him, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself out to be God. They understood very well. You know, we have theologians today or people today saying, well, you know, Jesus never really said he was God. They understood exactly what he was doing so well in the context of the words that he was saying. I think in, 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 as this is emphasized in, in this chapter and so many others, there is this I am theme, and that's the name by which God revealed himself to Moses is I am that I am. And so we, we see Jesus as being pretty clear on who he is. Uh, chapter 11 of John takes us into the story of uh, Lazarus. And uh, Lazarus was the brother of Mary and Martha, and it was the, the Mary who, it says, anointed Jesus' uh, feet with oil with her, and wiped him with her hair. And Lazarus was sick, and, and Jesus makes a statement in, in verse 4, uh, but when Jesus heard it, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified by it. And so he's, he's leading up to this, and it's, it's a step-by-step -step story and builds upon uh, a, a couple of uh, different ideas here. One is that, you know, you, we could say Jesus is never late, uh, but it sure doesn't seem like he's on time. You know, it's, it's like, like here uh, uh, the, the, the word comes out that Lazarus is sick and he, he waits around and doesn't go to the city. He waits and, and then he gets word that he's dead. And, and it's, it's like, okay, it's time to go. And I remember the story of a guy years ago and uh, the Lord had just anointed him at that time and gave him a promise that he was going to raise somebody from the dead. And I remember uh, somebody came in and said, there's a man in the car outside. He's dying. And the man said, he's dying? He says, yeah, he's not dead, but he's dying. And they came in a few minutes later and said, well, it's too late. He's dead. Because he was praying for the sick inside the building. And he said, oh, good. But it was in the, just in the understanding that the Lord had given a promise and, and the guy was raised from the dead. A miraculous story. But it, it wouldn't, sound, wouldn't sound like Oh, good, he's dead. But, but here, uh, Jesus is almost like that. It's like waiting for Lazarus to die. But he says that the, the sickness isn't unto death, but for the glory of God. And um, uh, so um, he, he gets to the point to, once again, Jesus gives an I am statement in this chapter in verse 25. Uh, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. And it's, it's in response to uh, Jesus first said in, 23, your brother shall rise again. Martha said to him, I know he'll rise in the again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection. So we see that I am theme building here once again. And uh, then he tells the people to remove the stone. And this is the, in the chapter is a famous 
verse, you know, when people say, well, I've memorized a verse in the Bible, I memorized uh, John eleven thirty five. Jesus wept, you know. So they, you know, they got a, the shortest verse in the Bible, and Jesus wept over his friend after they announced that he was, he was in the grave. And he told them to remove the stone, and they begin to question, question him because he says he's been dead for four days now. You know, it, there'll be a stench. And uh, Jesus said in verse 40, Did I not say to you, if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And so uh, they remove the stone. Uh, Lazarus comes out. He tells them to, to uh, loose him, unbind him, after he comes out. So it's like, how did he come out? You know, he was, he was wrapped up. You know, they usually wrap the bodies up with cloths and whatever. They'd wrap them tightly or whatever and put sometimes, uh, like in Jesus' case, uh, aloes and myrrh in there to, for body preservative. And, and so, you know, it's interesting how he would have come out. And I imagine people were pretty uh, amazed but frightened at this time. It says, after that happened, after he came out in verse 45, many therefore of the Jews who had come to Mary and beheld what he had done believed in him. But some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things which Jesus had done. You know, Jesus raised somebody from the dead. It's like the, they're going to tattle on Jesus, trying to get him in trouble. And, you know, of course, Jesus liked to do a lot of things on the Sabbath, just, I guess, to stir things up a little bit more. Uh, because the Sabbath is a day of rest. It's a day of faith. Rest is faith. Faith is rest, I should say. And, you know, and so Jesus did things on the Sabbath. And it's really, uh, the Sabbath is a, is, a, is a demonstration of rest. And our faith, that we really trust, is our rest that we have. And so it, that's not contrary. Jesus is, is doing things of faith on the Sabbath and in raising people up. But it really annoyed uh, the Pharisees. They thought if we don't do something about it, you know, everyone's going to be following him and we're going to lose our positions. So um, we get to chapter 12, and it says, Jesus, therefore, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. And uh, so in this, we get the setting here. This is six days before the Passover. This next section we got uh, 12 through the end, well, through the crucifixion, uh, through 17 is all like, this starts six days before, 13 through 17 is all like the night before Jesus died. I mean, it's, it's like John gives us a major part of this, this gospel to like just this last section of his life, the last couple of days, last week of his life. And uh, so very interesting, just, just a different emphasis that we, than we find in the other gospels. And uh, so Jesus is explaining, Mary anoints him for death, Jesus goes to Jerusalem, people are celebrating, he goes in, they're laying down, you know, palm branches and saying Hosanna, and uh, everyone's, you know, and it's really that people are excited because not only is he there, but, you know, he raised Lazarus from the death, dead, they've seen Lazarus, and they're kind of, that's still on everyone's mind, and, uh, but then it comes to the, the this point, and in verse 23, Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you. Now, the word, truly, truly, there, Jesus started statements with that. We kind of end them. Those words there are amen and amen, or amen and amen. He started with amen. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains by itself alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. So Jesus is explaining here, giving them a reason, essentially why he has to die. A grain of wheat, it, you know, on its, by itself is just a grain of wheat, but if it falls into the earth and dies, it, it produces much fruit. And he's kind of explaining in this picture, in this parable, uh, what's going to happen to him. So uh, we see that it, Jesus foretells of his death. Uh, there's a scripture here in verse 32. He says, If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw men to myself. Verse 33, but he was saying this to indicate the kind of death by which he was to die. You know, when Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, he was talking about he was going to be lifted up on a cross. He was going to be crucified. We use the term a lot. We use that term, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to myself. That it's our, it's our prerogative to praise him and to exalt him. And if we do that, people will be drawn to himself. But this actually has a greater truth. He says, if I be lifted up, which means if I be crucified, I will draw all men to myself. And the reality is, the truth is, he was crucified. So he, there is a drawing that he's doing. He's drawing all men to himself because he was lifted up. He was crucified. And so rather than this being uh, some kind of exhortation for us to exalt him, it's really a truth of what he's doing in the earth of drawing men to himself because he was lifted up. He was crucified.